Hello, I'm David Hester, and today we are going to do a topical study on the subject of baptism. Uh, in our uh, weekly Sabbath study, in the last study, uh, in Mark uh, chapter 1, we were discussing uh, the baptism of Yeshua, and a number of questions were asked, okay? Uh, the, the, the questions that I received are, do you have to be baptized in order to be saved? Uh, is the only form of baptism full immersion? And then there was questions on pedo baptism or infant baptism. And uh, so I'm going to go over each of these questions, each with a uh, separate video, okay? Uh, so uh, the first video, I guess, will be on the topic of do you have to be baptized in order to be saved? The simple answer to that is no. I should be able to... Uh, in the uh, the message right there, but there's a number of scriptures that uh, give people uh, some question uh, regarding uh, regarding my answer there, and so we're going to look at each of those these uh, scriptures, uh, you know, over the next uh, ten minutes. But the first thing to realize is how does the Bible say that we're saved? Okay, if it says that we're saved by faith and that we're not saved by ceremony, then it would only be logical to conclude that baptism, which is a religious ceremony, is not necessary in order to be saved. Okay? So, um, we're justified by faith. Okay? So, baptism is not necessary for salvation. You can uh, look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses... Um, Verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that's not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, that includes baptism, lest any man should boast. Okay, so we're not saved by works, not even religious works. Okay, and... Uh, but there's a number of scriptures that, uh, that come up that they say, well, you know, David, what you're saying just can't be true because, uh, you know, what about, uh, you know, John 3, 5 or, or Acts 2, 38, okay? And I'm going to say, I'm going to answer those questions, but uh, I'm going to say, uh, what about what is the gospel, Right? If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, Paul says that by this gospel you are saved, right? Doesn't he say that in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15? And then he explains what the gospel is. And he says that the, uh, the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now to add anything to that, is heretical. That would be heresy, okay? So, we're not saved by baptism. Okay, we are saved by faith in the uh, completed work of Christ on the cross. Now, you know, one interesting thing is in 1 Corinthians 14, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 14, where Paul said that, that he had come to preach the gospel and, and, and not to baptize, you know, and, and he says that he was thankful that he didn't baptize any of them, except for just a few. So, uh, you know, he said, for uh, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. So, if baptism was necessary for salvation, then why, why was Paul downplaying it here? Okay. Why did he exclude it from his description of uh, what was required for salvation? I think the simple answer is because baptism is not necessary for salvation. Now, okay, so those scriptures that I mentioned, uh, the, the one in John where it says, uh, no one can enter into the kingdom of God unless he's born of water, and of the Spirit, okay? And, you know, some people look at this and they say that this water here means baptism, okay? And uh, 
it, I, I think, you know, if you want to believe that, you can. But it's still not saying that it's necessary for salvation. Okay? But I think that uh, water here probably doesn't refer to uh, baptism because... Uh, When, when Yeshua said this, baptism hasn't really been instituted. Okay? Um, so the, uh, the baptism of repentance that John the Baptist mentioned wasn't until like Mark 1. So, uh, you know, if that's the case, then uh, baptism can't be necessary for salvation because... Uh, the, uh, the the baptism of repentance uh, w was no longer practiced, right? So, uh, but but let's let's get down to the meat of it. Basically, water here, in my opinion, means the water of the womb. Okay, it's talking about the natural birthing process. Okay, Jesus uh, told Nicodemus that uh, you know what he, what he meant about being born again okay this meant that he'd been born once through his mother through the womb through the birthing process through the waters of the womb and uh, you know and, and Nicodemus asked the question so what am I supposed to crawl back up into my mother's womb and be reborn so uh, Yeshua says that he must be born of water and of the spirit. And then he says uh, something like flesh gives birth to the flesh and spirit gives birth to the spirit. So it seems to me that the, the context that we're looking at uh, is talking about the, 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 the contrast between natural and spiritual birth. So uh, I, I think water here could easily be interpreted as the water of the, the womb, or the, the, the uh, natural birthing process. It could also be the water of the Word of God. Okay? The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, it, it says uh, in Ephesians that uh, the husband is to wash the wife in the water of the Word. So, However you want to look at this, I, I, I really think uh, that I would have a hard time seeing how this could be referring to uh, baptismal regeneration or the belief that baptism saves. Now, in our next video, part two, answering this question, we're going to look into some of those other scriptures. Thank you so much for listening to uh, this study so far on the question of, is baptism necessary? For salvation, you can visit my website for the rest of these videos at www.biblehealth101.com. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them below the video. Thank you for listening. Shalom.